Excellent. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Ben Box. I work with the Department of Housing Community Development. I'm standing in for Grilia uh, this evening uh, to uh, to help facilitate this meeting. This is the meeting of the Manufacturing Housing Manufactured Housing Task Force. Uh, this is a bilingual meeting, and we ask that all our presenters and speakers to please speak clearly and slowly to allow our interpreters to deliver the message in Spanish or English this evening. To access the interpretation function, look for the in, uh, interpretation icon at the bottom of your screen, which will be displayed as a global icon. You will then be able to select your preferred language. You also have the opportunity to mute uh, the original audio to avoid hearing the other language at the same time, which can be very, very distracting. At this time, we will hear the uh, message in Spanish, and then I will activate the interpretation tool. Hola, buenas noches y bienvenidos a la reunión del Grupo de Trabajo Viviendas Prefabricadas. Esta es una reunión bilingüe y les pedimos a nuestros presentadores y las personas que van a dar la charla que hablen clara y lentamente para permitir que nuestros intérpretes, intérpretes transmitan el mensaje en español o inglés. Para acceder a la función de, la, de interpretación, busque el icono de interpretación en la parte inferior de la pantalla que se muestra como un icono global. A continuación, seleccionará su idioma preferido. También tiene la oportunidad de silenciar el audio original para evitar escuchar el otro idioma al mismo tiempo, lo que puede distraer bastante. Ahora compartiremos el mensaje como lo acabamos de hacer. Estemos listos y muchas gracias. Thank you very much. You should be able to select your language now. And uh, Mr. Mayor the time is yours. Thank you, Ben. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the April meeting of the Manufactured Housing Tax Force. And a welcome from myself, Eric Mary Bojuk, and my co-chair, Soledad Portilla. Thank you for joining us this evening. To conduct this meeting uh, wholly electronically and to effectuate the emergency procedures authorized by FOIA, the Manufactured Housing Task Force needs to make certain findings and determinations for the record. It's a bit cumbersome, so I ask you in advance for your patience. My name again is Eric Mary Bojuk. I'm one of the co-chairpersons of the Manufactured Housing Task Force. To officially begin this meeting and because each voting member of the task force is participating in this meeting from a separate location, we must verify that a quorum of voting members is participating and that each voting member's voice may be heard by all other voting members. Accordingly, I am going to conduct a roll call and ask each task force voting member participating in this meeting to state your name and the location from which you are participating. I ask that each of you pay close attention to ensure that you can hear each of your colleagues. Following this roll call, we will vote to establish that every member can hear every other member. So I'll start the roll call now. Uh, Daniel Lagana. Elizabeth Lardner. Elizabeth Lardner is here in Alexandria, Virginia. Thank you. Bar Broderick Dunn. Clara Clower. Adela Barrera. Buenas noches, mi nombre es Adela Barrera y estoy participando desde Audubon, Alexandria, Virginia. Thank you. Kenny Mendrano Marquez. Kathy Clement. Ana Romero de Martinez. Victor Rivera. Lori Beiser. Jose Matus. Carlos Carrero. James Turner.
Lisa Epps. Lisa Epps. Christopher Ebert. Christopher Ebert. Margaret Johnson. Margaret Johnson. Margaret Johnson. Estoy en Chantilly, Virginia. Virginia, gracias. Josie Valdez. Ronnie Robbins. I'm here from uh, Bethesda, Maryland. Thank you. David Levine. <clears throat> I'm here calling from Alexandria, Virginia. Thank you. Ken McMillan. John Boylan. John Boylan, present, Centerville, Virginia. Thank you. Jill Norcross. Hi, Jill Norcross calling from Reston, Virginia. Thank you. Ava Muyen. Hi, this is Ava Muyen from McLean, Virginia. Thank you. Rick Edson. Rick Edson calling from Bethesda, Maryland. Thank you. Mark Viani. And Stuart Kane. Is, was there anybody that joined since I started the role? Or are there any uh, members uh, that I have not called? Okay, can I ask staff to confirm how many we have on the roll call? Mr. Co-Chair, we have 12 task force members on the call. The quorum is 15. Okay, so we don't have quorum for this evening. Uh, what is the, so we can proceed but cannot vote? Uh, can staff Correct. confirm that? Correct. Okay. So we'll just note that that uh, there will not be any votes taken this evening unless um, other members join during the course of the meeting. So if, if staff can just um, let us know if there are other task force members that join late, so we may recognize them on the roll call um, later. Thank you. So at this point, I this moment, uh, task force co-chair Soledad Portilla, so that I may be heard to make the requisite motion. Got it. Okay. I move that each voting member's voice may be adequately heard by each other voting member of the Manufactured Housing Task Force. Uh -huh. <clears throat> You have to call for a vote, so did that. Um, everybody um, in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Anybody opposed, please say nay. Motion passes, Eric. Thank you. Second Gracias. motion. Segunda motion. Voice may be heard by every other voting member. We must next establish the nature of the emergency that compels these emergency procedures, the fact that we are meeting electronically, what type of electronic communication is being used, and how we have arranged for the public to access this meeting. Therefore, I move that the state of emergency caused by the COVID-19 pandemic makes it unsafe or impracticable for the task force to physically assemble and that as such, FOIA's usual procedures, which require the physical assembly of the task force and the physical presence of the public cannot be implemented safely or practically. I further move that the task force may conduct this meeting electronically through a dedicated video and audio conferencing line that the public may access this meeting through the meeting link on the Manufactured Housing Task Force page of the Fairfax County website 
or by calling one of the Zoom dial-in numbers also posted on the website. It is so moved. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries, Eric. Thank you, Soledad. And last motion. It is next required to establish that the meeting provides for the Manufactured Housing Task Force continuity of operations or the discharge of its lawful purposes, duties, and responsibilities. It is so moved. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries, Eric. Thank you, Soledad. And so I'll take back the virtual gavel. Thank you. Okay. Um, has, is there any other member of the task force that has joined and has not been, um, has not responded to the roll call before I proceed with our agenda for this evening? So the first top, uh, the first um, update before we get into our agenda, uh, there has been an update to the work plan distributed on April 14th to task force members. Uh, the update identifies when the comments for each task force focus area are due and when the revised documents will be provided to task force members before the next meeting. So that, that has been distributed by staff and uh, we'll make a reminder at the end of this meeting for the schedule of comments for today, today's topics. So please note that uh, there's now an updated work plan with deadlines for written comments, email comments that can be incorporated and, tra and translated and disseminated to task force members before the next monthly meeting. I will now go through an overview of the agenda for this evening. Uh, the agenda for tonight is first, a review and discussion of comments received on section A, community outreach and community engagement recommendations. Uh, revised documents were circulated to task force members on April 8th. So we will be using um, that draft. Following that, we will have a presentation of existing community supports by Mr. Tom Fleetwood. And then we will discuss and review the draft recommendations for section B, community needs and providing for community benefits. And again, this draft has been circulated among task force members prior to this meeting. So we'll be using the latest draft provided. And finally, we will leave a few minutes at the end for public comment. So if there are no questions on the agenda, I'll turn it over to my co-chair Soledad Portilla to discuss um, the recommendations on section A, which was the topic of our previous meeting in March. Thank you very much, Eric. Um, before I start, I wanted to uh, thank all the task force members that um, sent us comments. And I hope that in between the comments we received and the comments um, that were given uh, at the last month's meeting, uh, the um, um, section A, um, it's all will be complete and um, ready for be published at the end of the, the task for life. Uh, throughout the document, we made several comments to uh, address um, the, uh, the need to include owners and not only residents. So you will see uh, several markups and red lines where we added uh, the word and owners. Um, the, the, the first major change that we did is in goal, the goal section where we added goal number three. Um, that reads the goal of the of the task force and the recommendations are to provide owners and residents uh, the opportunity 
to learn the right limitations and responsibilities under the Manufacturer Home Lot Rental Act of Virginia and other regulations. So we added that goal that we didn't have before. Um, going down the document. Um, I'm looking at several, sorry, I apologize. Going down the document, uh, we added uh, best practice. We, we, we changed the word a little bit um, where we say we'll, we'll follow best practices where applicable. On the task for value section, uh, we recognize that all the recommendations are for the, for the residents of the of the mobile home part of the mobile home communities, but we added and we feel that it was important to mention that there are other stakeholders as well, park owners, advocates, business civic leaders. So all considerations uh, should be given to everybody, all stakeholders. Uh, we added a definition of community owner and. Um, in going oh, down. Um, Con respecto a la notificación, hemos añadido la aclaración para decir que actualmente, eh, actualmente los dueños de eh, las casas prefabricadas a las comunidades se le notifican y estamos eh, comprometiéndonos a notificar a todos los residentes. Así que hacemos esa aclaración que, de qué es lo que pasa ahora en el presente comparado al futuro. La recomendación A2 es la, que es la siguiente. Hemos añadido el marco de tiempo de cuándo se llevará a cabo la reunión comunitaria. also stated that we will continue with this standard procedure for three to five years. Um, and the last big change on recommendation A3, uh, we received input from the Department of Planning and Development. Um, so when an application is filed, the applicant is responsible to notify the owner of the property and DPD will also make sure that the notifications is also sent to the household um, so that everybody gets notified when their land use applications on comp plan amendments. Um, and then the meetings will be coordinated with the district supervisor's office by county staff and, and through the um with the with the from the developer and the applicant through the entitlement process we added all that section and i think that's it in terms of changes to section a i wanted to open the floor to task for members in case there are any comments or anything else that we need to address on section A. I hear none. So Eric, I'm gonna pass it to you so that we can move to the next item on the agenda. Thank you, Soledad. There being no further comments, um, I see some members of the task force have joined. Um, so Carla Glower, Glore. Yes. Yeah, just, uh, could you state your name and where you're calling from, please? Oh, yeah, my name is Carla Clora. I um, represent the Audubon community. Thank you. Any other uh, members of the task force that have joined and have not uh, responded to our roll call? All right. 
There being none, I turn it over to the next item on our agenda, Mr. Tom Fleetwood. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, again, good evening, everyone. Uh, I just, before I uh, begin my comments, uh, I did just want to note uh, that we do have a have a, a challenge this evening in terms of folks having been able to attend the meeting. And I want to assure everyone that we will, um, that the material that we're gonna present this evening relative to resident, particularly relative to resident benefits, uh, that in the ensuing month between now and our next meeting that we will work to uh, to make sure that we are able to get input from our from our as many resident members of the task force as we as we possibly can. So with that being stated, uh, I'd like to just uh, make a few remarks before we get into the next section of the uh, of the the draft document, and that is to discuss um what kind of benefits um we can craft that we can put together uh as recommendations from this committee that would really help uh both residents of uh, our mobile home parks uh to be able to maintain and keep uh their uh, their units for example to be able to explore opportunities for first time home for home for more conventional home ownership, I should say, um, as well as opportunities to help uh, the owners of our mobile home parks uh, provide the very best possible um, uh, experience that they can uh, for their residents. So it's truly in that spirit of wanting to identify opportunities uh, to be supportive of both our owners, uh, our park owners, I should say, uh, as well as the residents of our mobile home parks um, is, uh, is the intent and spirit of the uh, ensuing discussion. We're looking very much to, uh, to hearing your feedback on the draft language in section B. Uh, and uh, certainly, this is, you know, this is our first shot at this, and we're looking very much uh, forward to your creative ideas and feedback. With that, uh, I'll turn it back over, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fleetwood. And with that, we're going to go into the next section, which is to discuss the recommendations under Section B for community um, benefits. So we have finished now um, discussing uh, the first set under section A, which is community outreach and engagement. And today we're gonna to start a discussion on the draft language for understanding community needs and providing community benefits. We will get comments today and we will also get written comments from you from the task force members um, and, we'll set, and we'll set a deadline for that as well to include in, in the discussions today. So just a overview of what the recommendations are, and then we'll go through them one by one. Uh, there are nine recommendations in this category. The first recommendation is with respect to periodic community resident surveys, which is related to uh, one of the recommendations uh, in set A that we just went through. Then uh, recommendations on community infrastructure conditions assessment, uh, then support for manufactured housing community owners related to the community infrastructure assessment, management practices, supporting community residents in purchasing their communities, such as community land trusts, supporting redevelopment that preserves affordability, a pilot grant program for home improvements of manufactured home units, home buyer education for manufactured home owners, and a, develop, and a development of resident displacement plans in uh, event of redevelopment. So those are the nine recommendations that we will be discussing today. So we'll proceed to recommendation one. So recommendation one is a recommendation for periodic community resident survey, surveys. The bullet points for this recommendation are to identify funding for triennial surveys of each manufactured housing community. This 
the surveys are recommended to be staggered to ensure a survey is conducted in each calendar year of a manufactured housing community. To implement a com community resident driven survey model, similar to the one uh, done at Harmony Place, which includes trusted community partners. And to analyze data to understand the needs and desires of residents, identify community living challenges and opportunities, and identify improvements in policies, plans, and procedures. So are there any comments on recommendation number one and some of its sub-recommendations? Recommendations? Senor Chairman, yo tengo una pregunta. Ronnie Robbins? Yes, yes. please. Hi. When you say identify community living challenges, would you describe uh, in a little more detail what that means? Can we have somebody from staff to provide some backdrop on that? Mr. Chairman, happy to, happy to help. Um, Ronnie, thanks. Thanks for that question. I think, you know, what we're looking for uh, there largely are uh, identifying opportunities for supportive services. Um, Entonces, not, apoyo. Not no necesariamente problemas con los parques en sí, aunque eso podría ser una de las cosas que identifiquemos, pero lo que estamos buscando específicamente son las necesidades de servicio. Gracias. Si tienes una pregunta, por favor, pueden usar la manita y levantar la mano. Es más fácil para que nosotros podamos identificarlos. ¿Hay alguna otra pregunta o comentario con respecto a la recomendación B1? Entonces podemos eh, seguir con B2. Oh, oh yeah. I'm sorry, John, please. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Eric. I, I just curious, have we thought about Solamente how estaba curio, tenía la curiosidad de ver cómo vamos a hacer las encuestas. Talked about obviously the having them in multiple languages, uh, and you, you know, and, and we talked about how hard it is for some of these folks to take time off to to you know answer some of these or attend. Awareness. I mean, can we use social media? Everybody seems to have a phone. Can we do some electronic means? I just, when we talk about funding, I want to make sure we fund it appropriately and we think ahead about trying to help them so we actually get a completed survey. Yeah, one of the one of the benefits we have is we, we have one template or model, I guess, the experience from what, what was done at Harmony Place, which um, I think had a very high response rate. So we have lessons from that, but um, I mean, your point is well taken that we can always improve on the process and, and every community is different. So um, anything to add uh, from staff? Yeah, I, I, would just, I would just also say that uh, it's also gonna depend on the needs of the community, like the actual communication needs of the community. Um, the Harmony survey was done uh, tailored specific to uh, the needs of that community. Uh, certainly, there's a lot of commonality uh, in some of these communities, but um, but I think you know I think your point's well taken that uh, as we move forward, we're going to need to craft these in a way that works for each uh, each individual uh, park. Thank you, um, Mary. You had a question. Yeah, I, I thought the harmony place discussion that I think needs to be collected, which is kind of around the economic situation, the dust and what ranks, what amounts they actually pay now for uh, their housing. Uh, I think there seems to be that they might not own actual homes because they're not educated enough. For about home, but they really are poor in many cases, and there is a big gap between the price of the mobile home and that. And maybe some things to uncover about, you know, loans and how people have or don't get the money to buy a mobile home. I think there's some more information 
information. It would be great to know, I, know exactly, I don't know if people feel comfortable filling out surveys about those questions, whether it's more of a focus group information that I've heard in mobile home parks that I don't see coming out in any of these um, documents or Tom? Mary, you're breaking up. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll just say in response to that, it was a little bit difficult to follow because of the, of the, the, the signal. Um, but certainly um, the, uh, the needs of the families relative to the extent to which they can participate in home ownership programs is a is a significant concern and one that we're hoping to address through these recommendations. So definitely, definitely concur with you there. Yeah, what, what I was saying is that I, I think some other data about people's economic situations and um, It may not like this type of neighborhood survey. People may not feel comfortable answering those questions. So I want to be put into what data is needed um, and how that can be collected. Uh, Got it. Thank you. I think we got the we got the gist uh, the second time around a little bit better. Um, moving on to B two. Community infrastructure conditions assessment. Subpoints under this recommendation, in coordination with property owners, conduct an overall infrastructure assessment of the manufactured housing communities and provide an estimated cost for the repairs to help gauge the potential financial resources that may be required. Possible general assessments of external unit condition in coordination with the unit owners. The, sur the survey may also be an opportunity for residents to voluntarily indicate areas of improvement for individual units and the community at large. So are there any comments to recommendation B2? Okay, having heard none, um, let's go to B3, which is related to B2. Support for manufactured housing community owners Subpoints under this recommendation, the Fairfax County Redevelopment and Housing Authority uh, provides options to provide possible financial support for manufactured housing community owners to fund infrastructure and other critical improvements to their property, support in the form of FCRHA loans or other funding mechanisms similar to those used for affordable housing development, a structure funding contingent upon affordability guarantees and a right of first refusal for residents. Eh, eh, para otros residentes de refugio o pueda que puedan tener eh, una compra en esta comunidad. Recommendation number three. Dan. Oh, th thanks, Eric. I, I just had a quick question about about B two, and I, I'm sorry. I, I know. You oh yeah, moved please. Um, no, no. So I just had a question about working with the owners of the the mobile home uh, of the manufactured housing community. Uh, it, I I know that this is may, maybe this is a a larger legal question, but um, uh, and maybe this is directed at Tom. Is do you anticipate that that it it may be difficult to work with some of the owners, or do you, or, or is it? Are you pretty confident that that we can be easily access the 
the communities to obtain whatever information we need. Uh, Mr. Lagana, thank you very much for that question. The, the intent here is to work collaborative, collaboratively with the owners. And uh, every indication that we have so far, we have a, you know, there, we've got very good representation on, uh, on this task force by, you know, some of the, uh, some of the community owners. And um, what we're hoping here is for, is for, you know, voluntary participation in this. Um, that's why we, that's why we've tried to stress, you know, coordination with the property owners. Okay. I, thanks. I appreciate it. And I appreciate uh, Mr. Fleetwood being called Mr. Lagana, but thank you. Uh, I, um, that's all I, that's all I had. I, I may follow up with some, some emails or something later, but I do appreciate it. Thank you. Um, David Levine. Thanks, Eric. I, I would just add on B3, the, the next one. Mm -hmm. uh, on the, yes, on the first bullet point, I think it's worthwhile looking at other options beyond FCRHA for funding infrastructure and other critical improvements on the properties. Because I know there are federal and state resources that could also be brought to bear on it. Um, and I, I think it'd just be worth you know, keeping you kind of keeping an open open eye on those. Thank you. Yep. So certainly, multiple funding sources are, are always are always a good thing uh, for this sort of uh, improvement. Um, Ronnie Robbins. I just wanted to respond to, I guess, Mr. Lagana's comment, and I think that there are public easements. But certainly you have health uh, emergency easements, ingress, egress easements. You have in some situations, other utility easements that go to the public um, in order to ensure health safety issues. So I would think that there are public rights of access to the properties. It may not be, um, what was I gonna say? may not be as comprehensive as you would like. Um, I know as a representative of a property owner, uh, in addition to those easements, and that's of course the last resort, I'm sort of laughing as I say that, but um, it seems to me if the, the spirit of this task force, which I think Tom Fleetwood um, embraced, is to have a cooperative working relationship. If there is the possibility of bringing greater understanding of possible financial resources to property owners who are having issues, they're going to be more welcoming of someone you know, coming on board, assisting them with assessing infrastructure and also a means to deal with the situation. Of course, that may be slightly idealistic. There may be a few holdouts here or there, but um, I know that we certainly would welcome that. But of course, we also do our own uh, infrastructure assessments on a regular basis and make improvements as needed because we're in, we see ourselves as long term. Eh, eh, a largo termino, y inverto, inver, inversionistas a largo termino y asegurarnos que tenemos una, una comunidad eh, saludable, ¿no? Para asegurarse que tenemos una... Well, thank you. Uh, thank you, Ronnie. Yeah, no, thanks a lot, Ronnie. I really appreciate that. And I'm sorry if I implied that maybe that wasn't, you know, that was a general statement directed at all property owners. That wasn't the case. Just on the Planning Commission a few weeks ago, we did have a case come up with um, uh, Pendaw Terrace Mobile Home Park. And, it, and there wasn't anything wrong with it, it, it per se in, in that it was just that there was a, a confusing I think uh, th there was some misunderstanding as opposed to what the boundaries were with respect to outreach and the residents and and of mm -hmm. course the property owners and I just wanted to make sure that you know uh, we were sort of working uh, to to try and mitigate anything that would come up but you know, I, I I will thank you Thanks. 
Thank you, Ronnie Robbins and Mr. Dan Lagana. Um, any other comments on recommendation B3, support for manufactured housing community owners? If not, uh, let's proceed to recommendation B4, management practices, create guidelines for community management, provide a point of contact to assist residents in addressing management concerns, seek legislative changes to strengthen resident rights, particularly in the event of a sale of a community. Any comments on recommendation B4 and the sub recommendations? Uh, I would just note on the third bullet point that the task force has already provided some recommendations for uh, changes in the state law that have been included in the Fairfax County legislative calendar. And, uh, and uh, this year and going forward, so at least some of that has been addressed in previous actions of the task force already. Any other recommendation, uh, any other comments on recommendation B4? Okay. Having heard none, let's proceed to, oh, sorry, um, Ronnie, please. Thank you. Um, you, you um, mentioned something, seek legislative changes. Are we going to be much more specific about what the specific legislative changes we are seeking? I'm not sure that I'm following. That's a very general statement. And so there must be some specifics that have been identified. Well, there have been some already in the uh, legislative changes that were recommended last, I think late last year during, during the beginning of, this, of the uh, task force. Uh, maybe Tom, can you, maybe you can provide some flavor about that and as well as other changes that staff may have in mind. Thank, thank you for that, Eric. Um, Ronnie, the, the the intention here really is to highlight the is is to highlight yes the the work that's already been done by the task force, and anything that we might identify kind of along along the way here. But really, this is intended largely to to reinforce the work that we've already done. I think Ronnie, um, some of the changes that were proposed was lengthening the um, notice period. That was one noticing the local jurisdiction simultaneously as noticing the I state, see. I think yeah. was another one. Mm -hmm. um, so changes along those lines uh, that have been already been forwarded to um, Fairfax County's leg legislative office. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Mr. John Boylan. Thanks, Eric. <clears throat> so uh, yeah, I, I, I saw that third bullet as legislative changes as almost a TBD because we're gonna talk about legislative in two more, two sessions from now where we might be able to fill those in. So it's nothing that's a commitment, but we might wanna fill it in. The, the only, and, and only cause I don't do this every day, but when you start talking about management practices that talk about community management and management as opposed to residents, there are different types of management, right? And, and even if we get, you know, uh, you know Tom Fleetwood's a management, but he's also manages a, uh, you know, one of the one of the communities. It, I don't know what the appropriate adjective is in front of each of the managements, but we might want to think about talking about what level and which management we're actually talking about when we think about the bullets, or if we determine, decide to add or adjust bullets later, because that management can be different things, different levels, and people will just read it and assume it away. We need to make sure they're crisp when we talk about what we're going to do as an action out of these. So can we, um, I guess for staff, can we um, have a, I guess a more focused definition of community management? Um, and certainly we'll welcome comments from the task force, written comments, so we can refine that further uh, as we change these, uh, the draft recommendations. 
our uh, our staff uh, subject matter expert uh, team will uh, will help us work on that. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, Tom, I'd say if you think about it, it reads management practices, the management will create guidelines for community management it is kind of that first bullet. And we just need to, again, just define it. I think it'll, it'll be fine. I just wanted to highlight it. Thank you. Uh, if there are no comments, we'll proceed to B5, recommendation five, supporting committee residents in purchasing their communities, community land trusts. When a manufactured housing property is for sale, the recent Harmony methodology may be used as a template for assisting residents and nonprofit organizations to work collaboratively to submit community purchase offers. Community land trust should be considered as a means for the preservation of manufactured housing communities and the creation of affordable home ownership opportunities. Any questions or comments on recommendation B5? I should note also that staff has begun providing background um, materials in, in addition to your agenda. Uh, some of these, um, some of the background for these recommendations are actually in those um, uh, backup materials or background um, information materials. So those would be really good for task force members to, to look at. Uh, in addition, I think we also had a video uh, courtesy of uh, Mary Payton that that discussed community land trust in a in a separate uh, program. So I'd, I'd encourage task force members to click on those links and get more information if if you require any. So are there any questions or comments at this point regarding recommendation B five? Okay. Having heard none. Um, bueno, como no hay comentarios, vamos a... Supporting redevelopment that preserves affordability. Two bullet points under this recommendation. Fairfax County should prioritize funding for all affordable housing projects to both replace the affordable manufactured housing communities on a unit for unit basis and to add to the county's affordable housing stock. Such developments should provide affordable opportunities for more traditional home ownership to residents of manufactured homes. Mary Payton, please. Go ahead, Mary. Yeah, I've I've heard that second thing a lot, but I really can't I can't see any path to that. I think some, either people are just slinging it around, or there's some path that's not. Mary, if I may, or any of the mobile homeowners. Mm -hmm. Mary, if I may, I believe your signal is is cutting off a little bit. Um, sometimes. I'll put it Sometimes if you, you speak without the camera on, it might it might improve. Okay, if, if you is that any better? Let's try this. Let's try again, Mary. Let's see if that okay. works better. Go go ahead. Yeah, I've heard that second statement a lot, but I, I I've never met a mobile homeowner who thought that was possible. It was like an order of magnitude difference between the price of a mobile home and a, a price of a house, a townhouse even. Um, so I think we should be careful about say, saying things like that um, without real, without really under, seeing whether that can happen. And I haven't seen anybody spell that out. People who in mobile home parks often want to buy a house. Many has told me, I would like a house, but house is four thousand dollars. My trailer was forty thousand dollars. I cannot buy a house. Um, 
it just it just seems like a seems like you're dangling something there that's really not going to happen and that's not fair to people okay i think we we, we can understand the, the your your and i yeah you, you're coming through better now mary so we understand what you said um i think tom has his hand up to respond uh, at least a little bit of response to that go ahead tom uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and Mary, thank you for those comments. I think um, uh, that, th that it's important to recognize that for many residents that traditional home ownership is a very challenging reach. But nonetheless, I think that for those who for whom it may not be, or for those who over time may be able to build towards uh, participating in one of the affordable first time home ownership programs that we should continue to pursue this. And I note, Mr. Chairman, if I may, that uh, Noemi Rivera has joined the call. Uh, and I'm just wondering if Noemi, I, I hate to put her on the spot, uh, but I'm wondering if from the perspective of Habitat um, for Humanity, if she might, uh, and their expertise in home ownership, if she might care to make a couple comments. Uh, thanks, Tom. Not at this moment. <laughs> uh, I, I maybe prepare some comments later on, but not at this moment. Thanks. Okay. And, and so, Noemi, if you would, um, what would be really helpful um, for the staff team is if you could send those comments to us so we can try and incorporate them in the version of this that, you know, that will come out in preparation for next month's meeting. Will do. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Lagana. Mr. Lagana, did you have your hand up? Hey, sorry about that, Eric. No, I, I made a mistake. I wrote, okay. Um, I okay. Kept, yeah. Sure. Let me. No, no problem. That. Mr. Boylan. Yeah. Thanks, Eric. Uh, we're trying to be active here and, uh, and make oh, some please. input. So, so B6 is supporting redevelopment that preserves affordability. The second bullet, it goes beyond what we're trying to achieve with that supporting redevelopment that preserves affordability. It's, I'm not saying that it's not something that we might look at. And in fact, right, and I, I keep catching myself as we're going through even tonight, I keep thinking about that what drove us to this task force was the preservation task force. We really want to preserve these opportunities these units for these folks that, that can't afford a lot of other ways of looking at it. So how do we preserve it, don't jeopardize it or let it fall into such disrepair that it doesn't become something we keep. So I think that's an important, B6 is an important bullet, but what are those things? We say a lot of things, you probably have two or three things in that first bullet that we might break out. And, and, and maybe that second bullet goes someplace else where we talk about traditional home ownership because like Mary, I remember when we did the preservation, you know, we were saying, hey, we don't really understand what folks want. Some of them may not want to uh, go to a home. They, they may have some other plans or move. This, this is just an interim step. We, we have to understand what homeowners or, or uh, dwellers in the manufactured homes really want. And we shouldn't assume the traditional home ownership and, and what that percentage of people is. So, I'm, I was concerned, I, I raised those same issues in my head that Mary rose about that second bullet, but looking back at B6, maybe that's not the right place for that second bullet. Yeah, there's, so there's a, there's a recommendation to maybe move that to B8, which is the home, home buyer um, education, and to maybe um, convert the first bullet into shorter multiple bullet points. So we'll, we'll take that into consideration on the next next draft. Um, is this Ronnie is easy Robbins? when you just say oh. staff will fix everything? Oh. Yeah, we'll just make a <laughs> suggestion. Yeah, and, and if people have specific language or suggestions, please um, forward them to us as well. Um, Ronnie, did you have your hand up, Ronnie Robbins? I, I did initially, and um, 
I guess one of the questions I have, there are some folks who are, I, I think possibly for affordability reasons, only find themselves able to rent a mobile home. And so are we turning our backs on renters? In other words, is home ownership always the answer to, you know, traditional home ownership always the answer to a good quality of life? And so that that's sort of where I'm sort of caught in the, the whole this whole idea. And I know it's the whole conundrum of, you know, what's, you know, uh, livable, affordable, quality housing. And uh, it's much bigger than this particular <laughs> discussion, but I just throw that comment out. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Fleetwood, you have your hand up. Thank you. Just just very briefly to 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 Ronnie's uh, Ronnie's point. Um, I think that uh, to the contrary, we're uh, we're wanting to recognize that preserving the affordable um, housing opportunities that exist in these parks may mean different things for diff for for different families depending on what their needs and capa and capacities are so very much for the for the households that are renting uh, in mobile home parks uh, that are renting their units in mobile home parks we certainly are cognizant of that and want to make sure that both that and these pathways to uh, more traditional home ownership are are different tools in the toolbox as opposed to any one of them being the uh, the end all and be all solution here. Yeah, I think I think I would echo that that the, the intent is to preserve the options uh, for for the residents, as was the mission of the original affordable uh, preservation or affordable housing task force. So, whether it's affordable rental or affordable home or ownership that may be applicable to an individual resident. Um, and it may also be that since now the county is more engaged and uh, can educate and provide the options to their residents of all the programs that they have they, that may not be uh, as easy to access before, maybe that opens up some of these uh, opportunities to some of these residents that you know, may have known about them before. So I think Preserving all these options, I think, is, is an overall uh, target of, of these recommendations, both rental and um, ownership uh, of, of their houses. Um, Mary Payton, you have your hand up. Yes, so when, when you talk about redevelopment, yes, uh, talking about redevelopment uh, often gets us into planning and zoning issues. And I, I think there's a separate section on that, but if the county plans and zones, rezones areas that are mobile home parks for 30 dwelling units per acre, um, they're attracting in often new development that's more expensive and not creating an environment where there's gonna be as much affordable development. And the other thing I hope we note in here somewhere is the benefits of the mobile home communities. The people I talk to in the mobile home parks put that first. They stress the benefits of living in that spot in that community and losing those benefits will be a, a detriment to them if they're relocated. So I think we need to understand what those benefits are and get them in here somehow. Thank the you. benefits are often tied to the location. They're the schools, the churches, the services, the transportation, et cetera. Thank you. Um, make sure staff takes a note of that for changes. Ms. Ronnie Robbins, you have your hand up. Thank you, yes. Um, I guess one of the other questions- yeah, One of the other questions I have eh, tené, mantener los parques en buena condición. Hemos hablado eh, inspección de los exteriores, pero hay fondos en este momento para una de, los, una de las 
problemas grandes, especialmente cuando se trata de las casas prefacturadas y están eh, ubicadas en un parque. Usualmente se quedan en ese parque. A veces las personas hacen las casas móviles movibles, pero no es muy frecuente. Entonces, ¿qué es lo que pasa muchas veces? Es que eh, las casas se hacen muy viejas y necesitan muchas reparaciones. Entonces parte creo que el man, del mantener un parque de casas móviles funcionando bien es que eh, asegurarnos que las casas móviles eh, estén en buenas condiciones. Así que si es que ellos perdieron parte del reporte, eh, estoy un poquito atrasada en mi lectura. Eh, ¿Qué es lo que estamos haciendo para ayudar a los dueños? Sería a los dueños de las casas móviles y uno a los residentes o, o sí, que sí que se está ocupado por uh, gente que lo está rentando. ¿Cómo los estamos apoyando? Asegurándonos que las casas móviles que están en los parques están proporcionando eh, buenas viviendas para los uh, para los renteros, para sus renteros. Creo que es un muy buen punto, un punto importante, Ronnie. Nosotros tenemos una recomendación después de Many of us who live in mobile homes like the independence offered by our spaces, and maybe we would not like to live uh, in apartments. Any other comments on recommendation B6? Okay. Moving on to recommendation B7, which addresses some of the Uh, concerns that Ronnie uh, Robbins just mentioned. This is a recommendation for a pilot grant program for home improvements. Fairfax County should pilot a grant program to fund critical maintenance needs of owners of manufactured homes to address code violations and safety improvements. The grant program is to be operated by a nonprofit organization with experience in providing single family repair services. Any comments on recommendation seven, please? Mr. Fleetwood? just like to note about this one that uh, this is a bit of back to the future for us in the sense that many years ago, Fairfax County did in fact have a grant program for owners of mobile homes for just this kind of purpose. And I think that, uh, and it, uh, my recollection is that it served scores of families uh, when it was uh, when it was active. And uh, I think uh, I think this is a, a great opportunity for us to revisit that and uh, hopefully regenerate it. Thank you. How long ago was it, Tom? I want to say that we made our last grants to mobile homeowners under the Home Improvement Loan Program prior to 2005 and i want to say that it was possibly late 90s okay um eric do you mind if i ask the task force members or the unit owners or renters if they have any feedback on this pilot program if they would want to be interested Like, how do they see this working for them? Is this something that they would want to take advantage of? See if we get any any comments or suggestions. Mm -hmm. 
So this, this directly addresses some of the concerns that have been raised uh, both in past meetings and in today's meetings about um, addressing the needs of the units and unit owners and renters them, you know, directly. So any, any comments or suggestions uh, would, be, would be helpful. And we, we, when we say grant, it will be, it will be no, not loans, but just for them to use and, and fix the units, right? Right. The way, the way it was structured previously was it was specifically done as a grant program. My recollection is because we couldn't identify an appropriate way to secure the debt. So it was done, so it was done as a grant. So as a reminder, if those, if people want to think about it and provide us with written comments or email comments later on, you know, please, please uh, feel free to, to do that and, and provide some input uh, for the, for the redrafting of these recommendations. So are there any other comments on recommendation B7, a pilot grant program for home improvements? Having heard none, um, let's go to recommendation B9. Home buyer education to manufactured homeowners uh, related to some comments that have been received earlier tonight. Fairfax County should host a manufactured home information session, including topics related to mortgage lending, insurance, taxing, and possible depreciation of assets. Staff will research and identify programs that may provide assistance with rehabilitation. Um, staff will provide customized training and home buyer education to residents on first time home buyer programs with emphasis on how to build and use credit. And the recommendation was to move one of the bullet points from a previous section to this, to this uh, recommendation as well. So any additional recommendations, um, comments, and questions on recommendation number eight? Okay, having heard none, uh, we move on to recommendation B9, the last recommendation under this uh, group of recommendations develop a resident displacement plan. Four bullet points under this recommendation. First, determine resident displacement and relocation regulations at local, state, and federal levels. Develop recommendations to minimize disruption and maximize opportunity and choice for impacted residents. Address notification requirements, manner of notice, relocation timeframes, including eminent domain procedures, post recommendations on manufactured housing website and hold information sessions. Questions and comments on recommendation B9. Mayor Payton, go ahead, please. Yes, the current law um, doesn't allow any um, uh, compensation for a trailer that's too old to be moved. And a resident, if the park were destroyed for uh, development, would lose their entire investment, as I understand it, in that home. Um, if the home couldn't be moved, they'd have, if it could be moved, they'd have to spend, I don't know, seven, ten thousand dollars $10,000 moving it somewhere, probably out of this area. Um, this seems, it seems to be very unfair that someone would have to walk away from that big of an investment um, if the land is developed. And the land is developed because the county has has developed a comprehensive plan amendment that calls for upzoning. And, you know, it's kind of, of uh, making that happen by attracting a developer there. So I think that even though it's not eminent 
domain, there should be some kind of a responsibility on the behalf of the government to entice the development um, to compensate an immobile homeowner whose home is destroyed. And also to offer more reasonable and practical uh, amounts of relocation fees to people who want to move. And I also think we need, if there's not another section on benefits, we do need something on, on the benefits of mobile home communities and why it hurts people to break them up. It's, it's not nothing to break them up and we're not recognizing that. Okay, so two, uh, two recommendations from Mayor Payton. One is to verbalize uh, an, somewhere in the document the benefits of manufactured house, housing communities. And uh, I guess second one is the issue on compensation. Uh, so I have Ronnie Robbins with your hand raised. I, I know we'll get into this in more detail, but anytime there is a rezoning process, the county has always requested both compensation and relocation coverage. So I think when there's a formal rezoning at hand, and I'm, there are even bigger experts than myself on this matter, and I can only speak to um, one case that actually um, where we had some C6 zone land that the mobile home park was located on um, and we wanted to develop it as a shopping center, we actually went to, and we could do that by right, technically without any compensation that I know of offhand. I don't know if there's any state laws now and I'd have to go reread the codes. Um, I think the manufactured, I need to pull out the lot manufactured home lot rental act to see if it's still, um, if it covers compensation or not. And you all may know more about that than I do at this point. But whenever there's a rezoning, the county has always intervened and got the residents involved and made sure there was some form of you know, compensation. In our particular case, it was a portion of the existing Waples Mobile Home Park that was situated on shopping center zone land. And when we went to, at the time it was Supervisor Boulevard, so you know this is many years ago, and we had some R1 zone land associated with another portion of the mobile home park and basically said the impact of redeveloping the shopping center would be approximate, it would impact approximately 50 mobile home sites. And so we, we basically located 50 pad sites in the R1 section associated with the mobile home park, asked to have that rezoned to mobile home park. And then any of the residents who wanted to stay, we relocated them to the new pad sites, those who wanted to leave, we paid compensation to so that they could leave. And then we redeveloped the shopping center. So I guess in our, I think it was a win-win for everyone involved in our particular situation. However, I don't know, and I guess we ought to have a better handle on what are the you know, local state and federal laws that govern uh, when there is, you know, going to be a redevelopment of a mobile home park. There may be some existing statutes that deal with that now. Thank you. Thank you, Ronnie. John Boylan. Thanks, Eric. <clears throat> yeah, it, it made me think of a lot of different things, but I'm just wondering if and I'm going to say some things that, that may not really apply, right? But I, there, there, there are a bunch of ideas here. One is we think when we see displacement plan, I think a lot of us jump to an assumption what that displacement would be, right? Changing the entire manufactured home or the, the mobile park 
that's what displacement is for the whole thing. It could be a unit. Could it be the renters? Could it be a flood or a damage? I mean, the ultimate goal for why we're doing this is to try to preserve. So we don't want to put a burden on existing affordable housing outside of the that area that's already been taken. We're trying to preserve the units we have. I'm wondering if, or are we trying to overstep with this B9 when it should be things that are addressed through other, other areas of the, of the county and state government that talk about this and we can we can make sure we recognize it but i just i wonder if it's an overreach or if it's more than displacement is it any transition is it down to a unit or uh for people that leave is it just for the entire park because we all went the immediate place when we see displacement and relocation in my mind it could be two different things was displacement the same as relocation D depends on where you are what level we're at so there's a lot packed in here and a lot of legalese that we've got to be careful that we're not just stepping on something here that's going to just, you know, crush all the flowers that we're trying to grow in other places. Just, just a random thought. Thanks. Thank you. Mary, did you still have your hand up? Mary Payton? I do. Okay, yeah. well, go ahead, please. Just Displacement usually around here means displacement by development. That's the main threat to some of the mobile home parks. I think if there's a flood, there are some federal funds available, FEMA, that can deal with that. I can tell you that the, the state manufactured housing lot act does not provide any compensation for the mobile home. It only provides some relocation fees to move the mobile home. It does not provide relocation for the individuals. Uh, I think the county has provided relocation for individuals, uh, renters who make less than a certain amount of money. Um, the, the federal government does provide relocation for mobile homes and any property taken by eminent domain, which is not the case here. This is the county take, not taking the mobile home but creating the environment for somebody else to, to take the park and develop it into something else. So this is a different category than we have anywhere in law already. Um, and it, it, it isn't covered at other places. It would be up to the county to decide whether to do this or not, unless it can be um, incorporated at the state or federal level, but it isn't now. We should have those documents on our website I can send them. Yeah, if you could, please, that would be helpful. Um, I think just a reminder, um, again, as, as was stated previously, th this task force was born out of the Affordable Preservation Task Force. Um, that task force has already developed a one-for-one -one, um, replacement um, strategy or, or, or policy, which has been approved by the Board of Supervisors and our role is to flesh out what that means for manufactured homes. Um, but preservation of affordability and one-for-one -one replacement um, has been a policy that was uh, confirmed during the bigger Affordable Housing Preservation Task Force. Any other questions or comments regarding B9? And again, by no means is this the final word. Um, we're giving people um, two weeks to develop thoughts and put them in writing to forward to, to us and to staff to develop this language further for, uh, for our uh, further review in our next monthly meeting. But for this evening, do we have any other comments or questions on B9 that can be incorporated in the review and redrafting of this recommendation. Okay. okay. Having heard none, that takes us to the last recommendation. So these are all the recommendations for B9. Um, if we could go to. That was it, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Um, so having no other 
questions or comments on the recommendations. Uh, I thank task force for questions this evening and wish to remind everybody that there is an additional time um, opportunity for comments that can be uh, additional the para los comentarios que se the deadline for those is Monday, April 18. You can submit comments or suggested changes to section B, community needs and providing community benefits. Please email them to Regina Coyle. Uh, her email should be uh, familiar to many of you. Uh, she invites you guys to this meeting, but her email is regina.coyle at fairfaxcounty.gov. Once we receive comments on April 18th, uh, they will be incorporated and translated into um, Spanish and the revised bilingual document will be sent back to the members of the task force. Un documento revisado y también traducido el 2 de mayo. Vamos a distribuir el documento ya revisado, mostrando los cambios, incorporando los comentarios y un repaso de sección B. Eh, se va a llevar a cabo el 9 de mayo, que va a ser nuestra próxima reunión y ahí vamos a ver. Eh, so we look forward to your written comments. They're having, um, unless there are other comments or questions, we would like now to go to our public comment portion of our, of our agenda. So anybody uh, from the public who is not on the task force is now free to comment on the pro, on the uh, items before the task force. Is there anybody from the public? De dar su opinión. Alguien del público. Who is uh, lined up to provide any comments? Okay. Um, there does not seem to be anybody uh, for our public comment section. So we're going to close our public comments. And that takes us to the adjournment of our meeting. I think Regina just put her email in the chat as well for those who want to note that down. So um, thank you very much for your attendance and participation this evening. Thank just you, a reminder. Me. Yeah, go ahead, Soledad. Oh, so sorry, go ahead, Soledad. Oh, Tom, go yeah. ahead, Tom. Thank you. I, I apologize for uh, for interrupting. Um, I uh, just uh, in closing for, on 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 uh, on behalf of the Department of Housing. Uh, de, de parte de eh, vivienda. Chairs and thank all the members of the task force for their time and their work uh, as we continue to make uh, make progress through the document. I also want to make a make a, a, a particular note of thanks to uh, our team of staff subject matter experts who uh, from the departments of planning and development and health and neighborhood and community services and a number of our other partner agencies who uh, who contribute so much to the work that we're doing not only what not only in this forum. Uh, but in housing across the county and throughout our throughout our, our work. And I just wanted to note with respect to the role of our subject matter experts uh, that as we move forward here, uh, the, uh, the comments that you send in to us uh, are gonna go through a process, and this is for each of these sections going forward, uh, where our subject matter experts will be reviewing them, adding their own comments as appropriate, and assisting the, uh, the co-chairs in revising the document uh, that comes back out to you. Uh, and you, you can expect that, that, that the document that comes back out to you in preparation for the May 9th meeting will be a, um, will be a result of that process. So just kind of wanted to note that, uh, that uh, behind the scenes that, uh, that this group has a tremendous amount of professional support uh, that we're going to be that we we have been and are going to continue to benefit from going forward. So uh, thank you for the opportunity to, to to just share that and also to share thanks with uh, uh, share thanks uh, to uh, to my colleagues on the county side. Thank you. There is a comment on the chat that I'll just read. Uh, we as owners of homes, prefabricated homes, need to preserve our homes. We have lived here for many years. In my case, my daughters were born here. 
uh, we love our homes and displacement makes us uh, tremble with fear. And so thank you for, for that comment. And Soledad, as co-chair, would you like to also give yes. any? Before, add yeah, before we adjourn, mm -hmm. um, I would like to ask the interpreters if there's anything yes, that I, the algo. Spanish speaking uh, task force members want to say before we adjourn for the night. If they want to speak in Spanish, we can, we can, you know, we have a few minutes. Yo, yo quiero hablar. Okay, I would like to say something. Para nosotros, uh, yo he escuchado atentamente todo lo que están solicitando, pero uh, viviendo aquí, y lo más importante para nosotros es que se trate de regular la subida de rentas y, y todo lo que tiene que ver con cobros con las oficinas y en todo lo que hemos hablado creo que no ha habido ese punto en este sentido. porque a nosotros por ejemplo en Audubon nos suben de 35 dólares 32 dólares cada año y estamos llegando a mil dólares cada mes casi todos los propietarios de todas maneras, nosotros vamos a llegar a pagar mucho dinero y igual vamos a tener que salir. Entonces, nos gustaría que regulen eso o veamos la manera de trabajar en ese punto específico, que es lo que nos perjudica como comunidad. para el personal porque no he visto el plan, pero hay una sección section where we are talking about can be increased Tom, do you know? Um, so there are a couple there are a couple of answers to that. First of all, uh, Carla, thank you very much for your comments. Um, there are very significant challenges from a legal authority standpoint um, to institute rent controls uh, in a manner similar to what one sees in other in other areas uh, here in Virginia. That being said, the uh, the best path towards achieving that is uh, is in assisting. Uh, the mobile home park owners with financing improvements, et cetera, where, uh, where we assist them with below market uh, financing for, uh, for the uh, preservation of their properties in exchange for controlled rents. So it's not exactly uh, rent control, but it could be, and, and in fact would be a condition of any financing that we would provide to owners. Carla necesita que le trans, le trans, ¿sabe? No. I believe that has been translated already. Is that correct? Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. And and any thoughts from you directly, Soledad, before we wrap up? No, I just want to make sure that Carla um, got that answer. Okay. From from Tom, if I need to translate or if, okay. but if can can the interpreters confirm? Yes, it has. For me, it's okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, well, that brings this meeting to a close, and we look forward to any additional comments um, that you can submit in the next uh, few weeks. And thank you very much for attending tonight. And we look forward to our next meeting on May 9th. Thank you and good evening.